Hi everybody, I'd like to welcome folks to a new video series I'm starting. It's called Ask Derek. I work for you and I want to be helping you out in every way I can. So about once a month, I'm going to answer a question or two from folks back home. Put them online so you can see what I think about some of the questions I get. And with that, here we go. Steve from Tacoma wrote to me about two of the Supreme Court's recent decisions. He asked, are we now faced with a future where we have to inquire about the religious beliefs of a company before we take a job? It's a great question, Steve. I'd like to start with a bit of background for folks. The Affordable Care Act requires that most health insurance plans cover preventive services to patients without any copay. That includes immunizations, cancer screenings, and FDA-approved contraceptives. On June 30th, the Supreme Court ruled in Burwell versus Hobby Lobby and Conestoga Wood versus Burwell that closely held companies whose owners oppose the use of birth control are not required to provide contraception coverage for their employees. Honestly, I think the Supreme Court screwed this one up. This decision is a direct hit on American women's rights. Bosses should not have the right to deny their employees coverage for basic health care. Ultimately, a woman's health care decisions have been and should continue to be between her and her doctor. That's why I'm proud to be a co-sponsor of the Protect Women's Health from Corporate Interference Act. The bill would prohibit for-profit employers that provide employees insurance from denying employees contraception or any other basic health service required by federal law. Moving on, Catherine from Port Townsend wrote, seriously, Derek, how many hours do you log in your work week? One of the best parts of my job is working for people like Catherine and everyone else across our region. When I'm away in DC, I typically get uh, back to the place I rent around 10 or 11 o'clock at night. And then it's usually another hour of work for me before finally calling it a day. Uh, let me break down over an average sort of 10 days when I'm both at home and in DC, a rough example of what it looks like. Over those days, I'm in an airplane for about 10 plus hours, either flying home or coming to the other Washington. And that's time I spend usually reviewing materials and uh, writing letters to the folks I represent. Our region's huge, which calls for a lot of driving. Uh, we tallied it up and I'm averaging more than 20 hours uh, within the 10 day period in the car. And when I'm in the car, I'm often making phone calls to the folks I represent or doing calls with my staff. Uh, in a typical 10 day period, I also try to meet uh, with every person from the district that visits DC. So about another 25 plus hours over that 10 day period is devoted to meetings with constituents, uh, with groups that are out here, federal agencies and, and other colleagues. Depending on the week, you'll find me in committee hearings for uh, more than six hours as well. Uh, I serve on the Armed Services Committee, on the Science Committee, and then on the House floor taking votes for usually more than 11 hours over the course of a 10 day period. And when I'm home, traveling across the region, I'm usually speaking to Rotary Clubs and Chambers of Commerce or attending local events or visiting local vis uh, businesses for nearly 40 hours over that 10-day 10 uh, 10 period. So I hope that gives you a, a better sense of what a work week between home and D.C. looks like. Uh, listen, Congress is a fixer-upper, so I'm going to work every hour I can to get things back on track. As long as I'm here, I won't stop working for you, no matter how many hours in a week that takes.